Most, most Americans can look forward to the three score years and ten that the Bible says is allotted to man. But science is trying to find ways of extending life even further. That science, the study of the aging process and attempts to slow it down, is called gerontology. The thing about old age is that it strikes us all at much the same time, regardless of nationality or region. But there are three remote areas of the world that puzzle and confound gerontologists. A place called Hunza on the Pakistani-Afghanistan border. An isolated valley of Ecuador called Vilcabamba. And a stretch of lush valleys in southern Russia called Abkhazia, where it's not uncommon for people to live to 100 or more. Abkhazia stretches from the Black Sea to the mountains of the Caucasus, rugged highlands with rich, fertile valleys. Today it is part of Soviet Georgia, but the people are neither Russian nor Georgian, but the remnants of a tribe that wandered up from Asia Minor a millennium ago. This is Tarkuk Lasuria. He lives in the village of Kuto and works on the tea collective here. He puts in a full day's work on the plantation, chopping and gathering firewood, even though he is 93 years old. But he's knocking off work early today, for there's a celebration in the village. Tarkuk Lasuria, a fit old man in his 94th year, is on his way to his mother's birthday party. She is Kafaf Lasuria, about to celebrate her 135th birthday. The oldest person in the Soviet Union, and possibly in the world. The year she was born, 1839, Martin Van Buren was the eighth president of the 26th United States. Covered wagons were beginning to move out across the Humboldt Trail to California, and everyone remembered the Alamo. It happened only three years before she was born. Kafaf was a young woman of 15, when the Crimean War began. She retired from her job as a farm worker just four years ago. She still takes a glass of vodka every morning, drinks wine with her meals, and smokes two packs of cigarettes a day, plus a pipe or two of tobacco. She is revered by her family and her village, but nothing gives her greater pleasure than receiving visitors. She told us she finds nothing remarkable about her age. She still has a good few years ahead of her, she says, and she scoffed at the idea of age being a disability. Tell her that in America, when people get very old, a lot of people put old people into homes and they take them away from their families. And what does she think of that? Which <laughs> You know, yeah. people must respect the old people, you know. So they must stay with their own family, in their own house. So they must help them. On this day, a dozen or so other centenarians arrived at the Lasuria homestead to pay homage, along with the whole Lasuria clan. Some of the centenarians have been organized into a choir, and singing in Abkhazia is second only to food and drink.
Mark D. Tarkeel is 107 years old, yet he still works harder than many men in their 50s. It is difficult to verify these people's ages. Few documents exist. But Soviet and American researchers have devised a series of complicated tests designed to trap exaggeration and weed out false claims. Of 705 people tested, 95% were shown to have given their correct ages, and the remainder were within 5% of what they claimed. In some cases, there's evidence of being older than they claimed. What is even more extraordinary is their vigor and strength. These hills wore out the 60 Minutes crew, men in their 30s and 40s, who were following Tarkeel. Yet he makes this trip every day. Tarkeel says he and his father were kidnapped by the Turks in the late 1860s and made into slaves. But they managed to return sometime in the mid-1870s. And every day he scrambles down a half-mile trail, watched over by his grandson, Roma, to bathe in an ice-cold mountain stream. Roma, like every Abkhazian, regards it as something more than mere duty to see to an old man's needs. Tarash Jopua is 103. His youngest daughter is 22, born when he was 81. A Georgian doctor told me it is not unusual for the sperm of a hundred-year-old man to still be active. His problem, he said, is finding a girl. Indeed, one centenarian made a pass, a very serious pass, at the attractive associate producer who'd been researching this story. For years, it was believed that the secret of Abkhazian longevity was in their diet. Well, there's some truth, but their diet is no better or worse than that of country people in many places. They are particular about food. In spite of the collectivization of their land by the Soviet Union, they all individually own substantial gardens and keep their own livestock, and everything they eat is fresh. Their main source of carbohydrates is a kind of corn mush laboriously prepared for each meal. It's called mamalika, and it tastes horrible to a non-Abkhazian palate. They also do not, as is commonly assumed, eat yogurt. They drink a form of buttermilk mixed with water, and they eat goat cheese heavily laden with salt. And there's no such thing as leftovers. Everything not eaten at a given meal is fed to the livestock. Animals must be killed just before mealtime. The meat is then barbecued or boiled, and the juice or gravy and water is thrown out. They regard such things as poison. Despite their hospitality, they are skimpy eaters. A study found they consume only about 1,800 calories a day. 600 less than is recommended by the U.S. Academy of Science for males over 55. And their cholesterol level averages less than half the accepted normal amount for Americans between 50 and 60 years old. One almost constant factor among aged Abkhazians is that their parents, too, live to their hundreds. So all the mamalika in the world probably won't help you to a ripe old age if you have the wrong genes. Wine is taken at all meals, and Abkhazians call it life-giving. Some doctors believe the wine counteracts the toxic effect of other foods and prevents arteriosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, the cause of strokes. Jopua drinks two or three glasses of wine with each meal and a few glasses of vodka every day. He says Abkhazians regard drunkenness as bad form and obesity, a sign of sickness. Jopiwa's mother-in-law is three years younger than he is, 
a mere girl of 100. We went to the house of Selik Butpa with a Georgian doctor who'd been making his rounds. Butpa is 114, much given to singing, though bent with age. He says he still feels like a young man. Dr. David Solomonovich, a leading cardiologist, says the blood pressure and heartbeat is remarkable for a man of his years. Indeed, for a man in his 70s. The doctor says the Abkhazians are remarkably free of common illness, resistant to infection. He says they do suffer from heart disease in the same numbers as the rest of the population, but they rarely report heart attacks. He says the physical work expected of them strengthens their heart-lung system so that oxygen supply to the heart muscle is maintained. Even though they have heart attacks, they are silent, not felt by the victims. Beyond the Abkhazian genetic advantage, Dr. Solomonovich says hard work, balanced diet, and complete lack of tension in people's lives accounts for longevity. He has never heard any of these people utter a harsh word. And their children, he says, neither leave home nor send their parents away. Putpa and his wife, Marusia, who was 103, live amidst a large, bustling family. The couple's total age is 217 years. The Soviet Union makes a great deal of old age, almost suggesting that their social system somehow guarantees a longer, fuller life. The fact is that Russians live no longer than anyone else, if you exclude Abkhazia. In Kiev is the Soviet Union's Institute of Gerontology, recognized internationally as an important center for the study of degenerative diseases and the aging process. These tests might look like an extract from a horror film. In fact, they're quite painless. They're testing brain waves and muscle and nerve response, seeking to find why some people grow old, infirm, even senile in their 60s and 70s, and others remain hearty through 90s, even 100s. Old Abkhazians cannot be transplanted. Even to the capital city of Abkhazia, the sleepy resort town of Sukhumi. The pace is too much even here where the tempo of life and style of architecture is frozen in the year 1910. Without the peace of their mountains and their unique food and sometimes rather wearying hardiness, they wither and die. This group of 20 men, the Centenarians Choir, were feeling restless after only a few hours in Sukumi, where they'd been giving a concert. So we invited them to a party, a typical Abkhazian party. These 20 men's ages total about 2,000 years, 2,043 years, if you count me. But if you were an Abkhazian and you were, say, 65 or 70 years old, you could count on a good 30 or 40 years ahead of you. 30 or 40 years of drinking a flagon of strong white wine every day, of smoking as much as you want, and chasing the ladies like a 25-year-old. The claims of these super centenarians have caused a deep controversy in the scientific world. Many American scientists have verified the claims with exhaustive tests. But in the absence of hard documents like birth certificates, others, like the exiled Soviet geneticist Zoris Medveyev, say the old people are lying, that in Abkhazia old age is venerated, and the people claiming great age are simply seeking recognition. But suppose they are exaggerating their ages. Suppose they're only 107 or even 97. 
they remain a remarkable lesson in how to keep young. No magic potions, but some quite simple rules. Food from the earth, not from a can. Hard physical labor, not the so-called leisure years. And above all, an unbreakable belief in family life that makes age more important than youth or wealth and old age the most important time of life.